Chapter 7 Nick has started basketball practice in the mornings, so Mom drops me off at school now. I miss walking with Nick, but I love riding in the car with Mom. She always plays salsa music. We even dance in the car a little before school. Que tengas un bien día, she says, passing me my backpack and kissing me on the cheek. And you have the greatest day too, I reply. She hugs me super tight before I hop out of the car. As I enter the school, I can still smell Mom's perfume, which makes me feel cozy and safe. It's almost like I'm wearing her fresh laundry and lavender scent, like a sophisticated grown-up. Then I notice Stanley out of the corner of my eye. Immediately, I start feeling roja. I begin to power walk toward the front door, but Stanley apparently is also a fast walker. So I do the only thing I can think of. I run into the school office. Do you need anything, Stella? asks Miss Green with a raised eyebrow. She's standing behind the front desk. Nothing, just wanted to say hi. I smile while peeking out the window of the office. Oh, how sweet. Good morning, she replies. She reaches into a jar. Here, take a lollipop, Stella. Thanks, I say, grabbing a cherry lollipop from her hands. I check the window again. The coast is clear, so I say goodbye. Thankfully, we start with sustained reading in class. This means I can hide from Stanley and everyone else with a book in front of my face. I'm more mortified than usual. I'm used to the rest of the class thinking I'm odd. But from the way I've been acting, Stanley must think I'm the weirdest klutz ever. I take a small break from fishes to read another biography about Jacques Cousteau. As interesting as Mr. Cousteau, Cousteau is, and trust me, he is. He invented the aqualung, the portable breathing device that scuba divers use. I keep thinking about Stanley. Only a little bit. I just don't know what to say to someone who is the best at everything. He's a fast runner. He can balance a spoon on his nose at lunch. He can play the drums in music class. He's new and has already made so many friends. I've been here forever, and I only have Jenny, and she's not even in my class. It's almost as if he has superpowers, magic, or is it just really lucky? Whatever it is, I wish I could steal some, then everything would just be so much easier. Fortunately, I don't have time to think too much, because after sustained reading, we head to gym class with Coach Smith, who announces that we will be playing kickball. Boys versus girls, he says with his loud voice. His big voice matches his size. Coach Smith is the tallest person I know. In kindergarten, all I could see was his freckly knees when I was sitting crisscross applesauce style on the ground. Chop chop, he says, clapping his giant hands. The class divides up, with the boys on one side and the girls on the other. The girls decide that Michelle should be the team captain. Everyone knows that she'd be the best since she plays sports outside of school. Then we decide what order to go in. Michelle says, Stella's really good at running. She should go first. It's true. Every gym class, we get to run laps around the gym. Coach Smith always puts on fun music to run to. When Jenny and I were in the same class, we used to sing along, which slowed us down. Now that Jenny's in a different class, I just run quietly. Turns out I can run faster than most of the girls and a couple of the boys. I nod and smile at Michelle. I find that if I, I at least smile, people think I'm nice and I don't really have to talk. As the game starts, I'm excited to get up to the plate. But then I see Stanley. He's the pitcher for the boys' team. I freeze and miss the ball when Stanley throws it at me. The girls groan. Michelle yells, Just kick, Stella! Then Jessica Anderson shouts, Stella stares! Stella stares! Everyone else starts saying it too. After three misses, I sit down on the grass by myself. I wish I could find the magic words to say to make everyone stop. When we get back to class, I stay by myself and rest my head on my desk. It's almost lunchtime. At least that will be a break from this tough day. Class, before you go to lunch, Miss Bell says, standing up, I want to introduce a new ongoing project. It's on animals. You can choose any animal or favorite type of animal you want to research. Make sure it's an animal you really enjoy because we'll be working on this until the spring. I lift my head. I know exactly what I'm going to do.
We can talk about it more after lunch, but here's a handout for now, she says, as she walks around to pass out a handout with details. Everyone starts talking about ideas for their projects. I'm going to do bears, says Ben, you know, because of the circus bears. I'm doing birds, says Lauren, who smiles at me. Lauren is quiet like me. Sometimes we talk about Nancy Drew books. Jessica Anderson asks, what are you going to do, Stella? Her ponytail is swinging from side to side. I nervously reply, fishes. Makes sense, she whispers. Fish don't talk. They just stare. I groan and cover my face. Could this day get any worse? I'm so happy to see Jenny at lunch. I'm also glad to see that she's alone and not with Anna. Thank goodness, too, because I need my best friend, especially on a day like today. We each bring her lunch, so we sit together right away. I tell her what happened during kickball. Jessica Anderson said I never speak, and I just stare, and then everyone started saying it. You talk plenty around me, Jenny says, as she takes a bite of her Vietnamese sandwich. Vietnamese sandwiches are very yummy. They are made on soft French rolls with vegetables, tofu or meat, and mayo. Jenny brings me one sometimes for lunch. I know, I say, offering her a jicama stick. Jicama is sort of like potato and watermelon mixed together, and it isn't very sweet. We squeeze a bit of limon on it and the sweet, spicy powder called picosito. Jenny grabs one and takes the world's smallest bite. Jenny likes seeing how many bites she can make in one carrot stick and other types of food. She's up to 37 on one carrot and 52 bites in a pretzel. Maybe we can write a whole list of things you can say, Jenny suggests, after she takes another tiny bite of the jicama stick. Like, I'm glad the sun is out, I say, or that is a nice outfit. My mom says everyone likes a compliment. Totally. We can work on it on the playground during a recess. I've got my trusty journal, Jenny says. Jenny's journal has a big white tiger with sparkles on the cover. If she were still in my class, she would have done her animal project, her animal project on tigers. Instead, her class is doing different countries for their long project. Of course, Jenny chose Vietnam. Jenny went to Vietnam last summer for a family reunion. She brought me back chopsticks and slippers. I promised her next time we went to Mexico, I'd bring her something special, like an alabrije, which is a little sculpture of an imaginary animal. Alabrijes are simply beautiful, with all different patterns and colors. During recess, we make a whole list of things I can say until we get bored slump over as I look at the list. Jenny, I don't know if this will help. It might. Jenny stands up and brings her fingers to her forehead. She has an idea. She lifts her arms into the air, spreads her fingers wide, and says, I know you can use the power of deduction. Deduct what? I can't even say the word. There are too many letters. Deduction. It's something Sherlock Holmes says. Anyway, it's just asking questions. People love questions. You can ask them about their day or what they're doing. Then you'll know more about them, which means it will be easier to talk to them. It's like your own personal game of 20 questions. Maybe. Sounds easier said than done. She grabs my hand. Come on. Let's go to the swings. We sit in the, we sit in the swings and go as high as we can. Afterward, Jenny hangs upside down from the jungle gym while I just sit on top of it. Jenny is really brave and can do flips. I am always too scared that I'll fall. She always looks so funny with her super straight black hair hanging upside down. Come on, let's practice. Ask me, ask me questions, says Jenny as she pulls herself right side up again. I draw a blank, so I ask an easy one. Do you like dogs or cats? Stella, you know it's cats. Ask me harder ones, she says, lowering herself off the monkey bars. Presto, I have a good one. Who is Sherlock Holmes? Excellent one, Stella, she says, jumping onto the balance bars. Just then, Jenny then starts telling me all about Sherlock Holmes, how he's a famous detective from a series of books, and how she recently watched part of the Sherlock Holmes movie at her cousin's house. From there, it's so easy coming up with more questions to ask Jenny. 
like about her cousins and what they do together. But then again, it's always easy to talk to Jenny. Even though I'm getting the hang of it, it's no mystery that what I really need is Jenny in my class.